So Richard, thank you for coming in. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. Tell me, take me back to the beginning. Tell me a little bit about your story. Sure. Um, I'm an individual with Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of autism, class I functioning autism. I was diagnosed in the mid-ish 90s when uh, Asperger's syndrome um, was just made a clinical definition in the UK in 1991. So it was a fairly new thing. And throughout years in uh, schooling and you know early employment, I've had a few interesting experiences. And from that, I began autism advocacy work almost 10 years ago, where I go to businesses, schools, to talk to students, teachers, uh, maybe parental groups, and uh, in the case of uh, Westmoreland in Cumbria to NHS staff and tell them what autism is and isn't in a kind of light-hearted uh, humorous but informative manner. Um, and would you say having autism did it ever affect your childhood or did you find? Yes I mean as uh, people as humans beings we're very social creatures and it's a huge part of society whether or not you're um, you know who you're friends with in the playground as a kid or you know who you know in the wider world in regard to connections to fine work for example for example so the factor of autism for me meant that becoming aware of these social um, situations whereas a lot of students at say university study to learn their field, I had to really study hard to get these social cues that come very naturally to a lot of people. And so you're in second year of university, tell me the story of how you got to here. Well I, um, when I left school I had originally no intention of going to university, I found it as intriguing and interesting but I wasn't overly fixated on doing that and um, eventually through one or two jobs I'd you know been from job to job I thought to myself well I want to go back to kind of my roots my passion from school which was business uh, studies something in that spectrum I really enjoyed marketing and a lot of firms uh, would unfortunately say well you've got some experience if you don't have any industry specific experience or I'm sorry you don't necessarily have uh, the right qualification you've got an A level but you don't have a degree in the subject so three days before personal statements are due in on UCAS I thought I'm going to go to university so for two of the three days I ran around like a hell chicken trying to get it together submitted it in just in time and well I'm now at UCLAN. Here you are. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your advocacy the different presentations that you do what kind of things do you talk about? Well as I said initially I give it give the presentation to different people in different mm -hmm. professions so for example if I was to present to uh, like say sixth form school students I would tone down the terminology completely use some more real world examples try and use a bit of humor poke fun at myself and uh, try and make it more relevant to uh, you know those students there's no point in giving me textbook definition because it's, it's just gonna go whereas with uh, say parents or business owners I'll put in a bit more of a of more, bit more of a technical jargon or more intricacies but I'd still keep in the humor and what have you and then with professionals like with NHS I you know add in a lot more detail and a lot more complexities to it but then you know still adding a bit of a humor and so on because the people remember uh, remember a lot more being told on an interactive level than yeah. just being told and so how often do you put these on? Uh, very few and far between. Um, I think for the past two years I've maybe done one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, it, again, it's just when it either falls in line with my studies or when I reach out to places. You know, some schools have had me back on a repeat basis yeah. um, to speak to multiple year groups. And yeah, I, I, it's not, it's not, what I would you know it's not a career or anything or yeah. it's not a uh, you know I I just I just do it because I feel it's an important personal, message yeah. yeah it's just an important message to get out there sorry go on I'm oh, sorry so why do you think it's important to hold these kind of talks and to explain to people well in the early 90s 
autism was still a very unknown thing you know you had films like Rain Man which I, you know I saw and thought were brilliant but you know we don't all have the superpower of the toothpicks scene if anybody recollects that but um, I, you know and moving on to more today you know you've got TV shows like The Big Bang Theory and um, The A Word and so on doing great things um, but again we get we're in danger of encapsulating everyone with autism to being one definition the auti autism is what's called an autistic spectrum you'll have one person with autism who's completely different to the other and I think it's important because especially in the community and with the economy autistic people have a lot to give to the economy um, the BBC program employable me is a highlight of this and people with autism can be hyper focused and incredibly detailed in a job or profession they go into they just might need a little help bit of help to get into that position in the first place um, I think about one in 61 and 100 are meant to have uh, an autism related condition within the UK but out of that the majority aren't in employment and that's a huge disparity and again with the right support and with the right understanding by say co-workers and employers you know it's boundless and would you say then that there needs to be some more information explanation out there from the different ranges that there are yeah I do I mean all the talk on autism um, and how it forces the brain to function slightly differently and all these other things can sound very scary but there's a layman's term I heard once which I thought was brilliant and that was you have for an example you have an Android phone and an iPhone they both do very similar things sometimes the Android will do things the iPhone can't vice versa and just because of a different way of doing things doesn't inherently make the other one wrong so that's the way I describe autism you've got someone with autism or the person who's neurotypical aka the word for someone who's normal in, in quotes um, I think it's just a different way of thinking that's got to be celebrated I've, uh, because you've got so many people who either have or are suspected to be autistic I mean we've got uh, the lady who was on Britain's Got Talent Susan Boyle uh, you've got the guy who arguably made Batman cool again Tim Burton and you've got other industry leaders out there like the you know the Gates and the Zuckerbergs of the world so onwards and upwards so to speak well thank you so much for coming on Richard it was lovely to meet you and I wish you all the best pleasure of luck. thank you